मुझे दिखता है कि लगेगा ये ठीक है So 
every research is related to the development of idea that how the nation building can be developed based upon the literature. What are the new ideas which are coming? There must be focus on the research to learn the challenges the existing knowledge. There are already knowledge, there are some theories, there are some theories which have a little bit now text. But how you are going to challenge those concepts and how you are going to explain, there must be focus on that. There must be using critical, creative capacity to discover or invent something new, including theory and interpretation. Research is nothing just only explain some of the ideas which are available in our literature. But how new ideas are developed based upon the literature. Already scholars have written down some of the basic ideas on the research. But how you are going to interpret in different manner, how the new ideas are coming, this is called research. Research also gives a focus on bringing a new creation to Christian life, new indicators of our evolution is Now, there must be diversifying as far as possible, particularly later in the career. Whenever a person does research, there must be some new idea which must come in the research and there must be some scope for the further research in the career for the other students also. Now, there must be aims and objectives of the research. How you can, until unless there are no objectives, there cannot be research also. The objectives, are, these are called chapters of your dissertation. So it is to understand the properties of the given phenomenon. That whatever the things which are happening in our day to day life, we have to understand that what are the properties. Suppose a person wants to cast his vote, so there must be some behavior or intention of a person to cast his vote. So that is the aim of the voter to cast his vote. In the same way, a researcher must have an aim and aim to give new ideas or any concept. Again, there must be aim to understand the relationship between the variables. There are some theories which are changeable, but there must be relationship between these two. All phenomena are causally related with each other. So theories which are coming into our existence, they are also causally related with each other. To predict the outcome, there must be a new idea or thought whenever you are writing a research. To replicate research for deliberations, whatever you are giving new ideas, it must be validated or tested through our literature or text also. There must be development of new algorithm or instrument. If in the field of literature there are no any instrument, but there are language laboratories also in some of the universities. So we can take the help of the language laboratory so that we can have some idea that how ideas have been written down by the composer of the text. To produce a theory, that is the main aim of research scholar. There must be some motives of the research also. It is also called that research is advancement of any knowledge which are available. There are so many theories and concepts, but there must be some advancement of the knowledge, whether it is in the field of science, technology, humanities, arts. So there must be advancement of the knowledge, whatever the theories which have been 
vulnerability written by scholars. What new thing you are going to get to do in that research? That is online research. There must be motive of the research in that. Uh, there are some researches which are done that how the business can be developed, how the commercial linkages can be developed so that there must be the development of the economy in the nation or the state also. The researches are done for the policy making of the country also, for the nation also. So there are some motives for the research which are done for policy. Every government of any country, it also formulates some of the policies for the development of socio-economic, political development of the country. So research has one motive of the policy for research. There are some persons who do research for the investigation purpose, for the research period. And there are some persons who have a motive for only self-satisfaction. So these are some of the, you can say, motives of the research. Now we are coming to the research methodology framework. How can we process for our research? How can we start our research? So whenever we are Selecting any topic for the research, there must be literature review. Literature review means that as many times you have to go through the literature of your subject, as well as you have to search for the literature on the Google or internet or online media methods. You have to search your literature from the library through the internet, through the archives. So this is the continuous method. And when you start to do any research problem, it needs to have literature. And whenever you go through the literature, you must review it. That what are the new things which have been taken, what are the research problems which have been taken together in the paper, research paper, or any, you can say, the thesis of the book or any chapters. So there is a continuous literature search and review. Whatever you gather the information, you must review it. Then you have to make the research problems. The first which comes that if you wish to do research, there must be some problem related with any policy or any theory or the concept. Then you have to make an hypothesis. Hypothesis is the solution of the any research problem which is arising in your mind. So it is tentative solution. It can be changed also. But whenever there is a problem in your mind related with your research problem, you must have a solution that I have, to, I have to make and solve this research problem. And this is called as a hypothesis. Hypothesis is the solution of your research problem. And if you have hypothesis and if you have the present solution, you must have an, a strategy that how you have to make framework of your research work. What will be the, your introduction? What will be the, your chapters? How you are going to present your thesis also? So, how you are going to write the conclusions? This framework of the such problem, this is called as a strategy. And then you start for the collecting of your research materials. This is called as data collections. Data collections means that uh, the literature which are available with your research, you have to collect it, then you have to make an analysis of those research materials which you have gathered from archives or the monasteries or the libraries or through online mode. 
So you have to make a data analysis of that. And then you have to design of the experiment, how you are going to write your problem or how you are going to write your subtopics. This is the design framework of your such work. Then whatever the chapters you have written now, there must be critical interpretations. Critical means it must it should not be biased. It should not be any partially related with any religion. But the, what the text and the commentary or the sub-commentary are saying about it, you have to be very open with your research. Then what about the solutions which have already come in your mind through the hypothesis of your research? It must be tested through your research methods also. So this is the chain of our validity. Then you have to write some of the research papers. Before submission of your thesis, you have to write down at least two, three research papers and get it published from peer reviewed research journals of your interest also. And then there must be following of the ethics. Every research has the ethics. Ethics means that you have to be morally sound when you are writing anything. Whenever any idea, if you are taking from any book or any research paper, you have to give the references or give the citations from where you have taken this idea. So this comes under the pluralism. Pluralism means if you are taking some of the idea of another scholar and if you are not giving the name of those scholar, it comes under the review of pluralism or ethics. So in every stage from the research problem when you are writing the research problem till your dissertation is complete, it is must be followed. You must be very much honest whenever you are writing any idea or any theory, you must get the references. Now, how you we can proceed for our research? So, it is a systematic linear process with few parallel activities along the side. We have already seen that it is not a gathering of the materials from the literature, but how you are giving new idea of Vinavu Chintana. This is called a Parisina or a Vinavu Chintana, that is new idea or novel idea if you are going to write. So this is the systematic linear process. It is transparent. Transparent means you must give the references and the citations from where you are giving your justification of the research. Then it is confined to the study of a well-defined problem. There are some of the research problems and you have already put in your introduction of the research problems. So it must come with the research problem. It is not like that you research problems, you have written something different and here in the chapters you are writing some other things. There must be four or five objectives of your research also. It must reflect in the chapters of your thesis also. Then it involves in depth analysis and limitations. Whatever you are writing, it must be investigated. It must be analyzed with the facts available in our Bali literature, Sanskrit literature or commentary literature. And it must be validated also. Then it also is to be interpreted within the data and limits, but critically. Critically means you have to be very impartial. You do not become here partial or biased. 
it provides clear verdict on the problem. It is often cumulative in nature. Next, what are the types of research? There are so many types of research like textual research, then qualitative research, quantitative research, empirical research. But here in a very brief matter, we will discuss that in especially arts and humanity, especially in Pali and Sanskrit text, we generally find qualitative type of research. Quantitative type of research is generally done in anthropological survey or sociological study of any aspect of Buddhism. So this extension or generalization of the currently available results. There is that there are some of the theories which have been propounded by our scholars. So you have to generally based upon those facts you have to write down all these things. It must be explained why findings the reasons why building theories, hypothesis and testing them. It must be descriptive also that what, where, who and how. Whenever there is a research problem, then how it developed, how the research problem came, who and how, these are the questions leading to any description of the problem. There is another research which is called as comparative research study, that when the two traditions are combined together for any research, this is called as comparative research. And there are some of the research which are done on the life history, life of the book or life of any character or any great sage. Then there are some of the research which are called as predictive. It is mainly based upon the quantitative type of research, mainly anthropological or sociological. It is not related with the arts and humanities. Then evolution study effect of ETV on reading habits also. Then new improvement of the process of our product or service. What are the, our changes in the lifestyle when there are some of the things which are coming in the life? What are the impact of those instruments like TV and other things in our contemporary society? This type of research is called as the sociological or contemporary Buddhism research. Then there must be impact assessment study. Whatever the research which are being done, it must contribute to the nation building in the field of sociology, economy, politics, equality. So these are some of the things that how we can make an impact of our research on the basis of economy, demographic, fiscal, community, social and environment. These are some of the aspects which are taken for the research. When we are taking research related with the economy and in the field of especially literature, we have to find out what were the ideas of the blessed one Buddha who were prescribed, which were prescribed to the blessed one, to the king also. We are quite aware there were king Rajatra came the royal duty prescribed for the king. So it must be related with the basic employment and land marriage. There are so many things which are available in our Sutta literature and the, some of the Suttas, Rinya Sutta, Kutitanta Sutta of our technique art, they are saying about the basic employment and the land values. Demographic, it is the sociological study when there is a population wise study or age structure. This is also that some of the area which is taken for the research, we take a study or research on the basis of demographic way. There are so many research methods which are taken for the demographic. Then there is another 
impact of fiscal, that is mainly based upon the sales tax, property tax, community, then housing, education, transport, these are coming under the community sections. Then social, Buddha was a social thinker also, and there are so many theories which have been propounded by the Buddha, and Buddha has given so many uh, suttas for the development of harmony in the society. So this uh, impact comes with military impact, displacement, legal activity, crime, then environment, how man, nature and environment are causally related to each other. Man is dependent on the nature, nature is dependent on the environment. So what are the impact of the, our nature, man and environment? And we have to take the consideration of the quality of air, water, noise, etc. There are some of the online research in the field of our humanities and the social science also in other fields also. So there are ways of research methods to study different aspects of the internet. Using the internet to apply research methods for the research questions also. Whenever we make any problem, there are some research problems also and how we have to validate all these research questions. Then there must be undertaking collaborative research also. It is also with other, another country, whenever a collaboration is being done, then that type of research is called that collaborative research. Another using tools like online survey, interview, online focus groups, virtual technology, technology, and for each social science research paper. So these are the starting point of our research. There must be a passion to do new ideas, to evolve new ideas. There must be curiosity in our mind. Because all actions are being governed by our mind also. So there must be curiosity that uh, how the things are causally related. Buddhism doesn't believe in Almighty power of anything. But uh, whatever the things which are happening in our daily life, it is based upon causal conditions. That there is no self-independent activity. Whatever the things which comes into being, it is based upon the cause and conditions given to the Pacha. And in the Dwadas Vidam, that is in Majyamrika, it has been said, I must do Sati Idam Bhati, I must do Sati Idam Bhati, I must do Pada Idam Bhati, I must do Pada Idam Bhati, I must do Pada Idam Bhati. That is, there is the existence of this thing, there is the appearance of this thing. If there is no existence of anything, there will be no appearing of it appearance of the Dhamma or state. So, we have to see that how the things are causally related with each other. Then, there must be generalization of the available results also. Whatever the results we are having, there must be. And when you are not satisfied with those results, there are some research problems which are arising in your mind. You have to start with then to test an all orthodox idea, so you have to give you justification for that, that how these ideas which are coming. So these are some of the things which has been given in one photograph. You can see that how this, uh, there is an elephant and there are six blinds who are touching the body of the Elephant, and they are interpreting all in different manners. So, one is touching the ear of the elephant, and he is saying that it is just like a fan. One is just uh, touching the feet of the elephant, and he is saying that just it is a banana tree also. So, like that, there are some interpretations of the research. 
So there must be multidisciplinary research. Now there is a stress on that how all disciplines can get together and get something new through all the disciplines. So multidisciplinary research if you go through that there are three programs through which you can see that first of all they want to be the feedback that disciplines working in parallel. So how the things are done in that way. And then you take the feedback from the disciplines which are working in the three, one, two, three. And then interdisciplinary research when the three are combined together with each other. So these are some of the things and they become the disciplines they do not have in boundary. They are beyond the boundaries. Now we are coming to the main subject, the experience of Pali and Sistema. So Buddha was a so Buddha was a great researcher also. He is called as a great mind also. And he is called as a great physician also Mahavistra. And he has divided that how our mind can be purified. And Buddha says that all the actions which are governed by our mind also. That is why in the commentaries Acharya Buddha goes says that in the Atasalya, Chittam Ti Chittam, that all manifestations of the actions are being governed by our mind. And Buddha also says in Amrutam Nikaya that our consciousness is even pure by nature. And it is being defined by incoming inward defined terms. Pakati Pavasaram Idam Chittam Tamja Tho Agantu Peri Ukti Lese Ukti That our consciousness is being defined by incoming inward defining factors. And wherever these defining factors are removed, this is called as that Chitta Sankilesa Sankilesa Sati and wherever there are no Kilesa, our consciousness becomes purified. And mind is the whole road of all actions which have been spoken in the Dhamma Pada, Mano Dhamma Dhamma Mano Sakta Mano So here Buddha talks about that how mind, our consciousness can be purified. And for that he has given a path of purification that is called as Visuddhi Madhu. And Visuddhi Madhu, you all are of aware that it is the text which was composed by the child who to go in the fifth century AD. And he talks about the three steps studied by the seal Samadhi and the So Buddhism has followed by many researches. From the very beginning, the Pali word for research is Pariyesana. In Majimikai, a term comes to Pariyesana. And there is a Sutta also, Pariyesana Sutta, in which Buddha has analyzed four noble truths and how a person can understand the methodology of four noble truths. He has analyzed in a very significant manner. So Arya Pariya Sena Sutta gives that how the teachings of the Buddha can be understood. Enough is spoke assist for the conduct of useful research in this field also. So there are so many scopes. Let us discuss that what are the scope for our Pali research. We'll come to the Buddhist study also. So there are language, literature, religion, philosophy and trends. When we are talking about the language, it comes for the grammar, aesthetics, change and comparison. There are three texts, Nilika Chandra, Nilika Chandra, Sadhanitya Yadra. 
and acharyas have written down grammar and we can understand the grammar very properly then we can understand the teachings of the Buddha. In Myanmar, there is a tradition that for understanding the teachings of Abhidhamma, a person must have sound base of the grammar also. Then under the tradition, there are research topics related to the author, a style of the writing of the text, prose, poetry, art, manuscript, icons and compilation. Then under the religion, there are some of the concepts related to the concept of Nippan, concept of Pratik Samudhapal, concept of Karma, Rebirth. So whenever we are talking about the religion, the, there are concepts, principles, rules, order and comparison. Under the philosophy, there are some notions, ethics, changing and comparing. And then under the training, it is a bhikkhu, it is made for the monk training, expert and the commons. Then under the politics, there are some of the sociological or anthropological uh, teachings of the Buddha which are available in the suttas or Vinay also. So we can have a scope for the politics. In Dignify, we are having Putthan Sutta, Amartya Sutta, Agayana Sutta, which discusses about the politics at the time of the 16th BC. And it discusses about the human rights also, that is the governance, law, administration, and comparison. So, these type of research can be done under the heading of politics. Then, social acts related with the ritual, festivals and concepts. Then science, whether Buddhism is also called as scientific study of the teachings of the Buddha and it discusses concepts, theory, method and comparison. And how the teachings of the Buddha can be applied in our day-to-day -day life. This is also called as socially engaged Buddhism or engaged Buddhism or social activism. And under this, the theory is related with the medicine, finance, travel and organizations. They are undertaken for the research also. Under the section or you can say subject or discipline Buddhism or Buddhist study, there are two types of research theoretical and applied. Buddhism is a psychoethical thought and practice, Pariyakti and Patpati, which takes a being from the state of suffering to the state of eternal bliss. Pariyakti is the theoretical teachings of the Buddha, and Patipati is the practical applications of the teachings of the Buddha by meditation, concentration, mindfulness, or other things. So there are two aspects of the Buddhism that we are taking. First is the scriptural teachings of the Buddha when we take it. It comes under the study of the Buddhist text or it comes philosophical and religious aspects. Whenever we are taking aspects related with the meditation, concentration, the mindfulness, vipassana, these are coming under the applications of the Buddha's teachings as mentioned in the text. Under the Pali literature, there are canonical and non-canonical literature. Canonical, Sutta Pitaka, Vinay Pitaka and Abhidhamma Pitaka. So, whatever the Buddha has reached for 45 years, from the time of getting enlightenment till the Mahaprabhupada, these are coming under the three headings in Pitaka. Vinay Pitaka, Sutta Pitaka and Abhidhamma Pitaka. So, literatures can be taken from the canon and non canonical there are three Anupitaka Sahib in the literature, namely Milindu Pahino, Dhrithi Prakar, Petkopadesh, and there are practical and commentary literatures which are also coming in as a non canonical. Besides, we are having the one literature 
and the manual literature also on each. So we are coming to the researching Bali Tibetan or Karnataka literature to address some of the modern problems. What do we are talking about the contemporary Buddhism? That how the teachings of the Buddha is relevant or significant in the present time in the development of the society or economy or politics. So that can be done from the Bali literature. How the ideas of the teachings of Buddha which were available in the Sutta Pitaka or Avidhamma Pitaka, how they can be analyzed for the present contemporary problems related with the food production, the every nation is facing problems related with the meals or the food. So we can take help that a part of the teachings of the Buddha which have been told in like Samanyapala Sutta or Uttadanta Sutta or Vinaya Sutta, how Buddha has described in some of the suttas or Sutta Nipata also, who talks about the production of our great sons. Then Buddha also talks about the Vesatya Kandakara of the Mahabharata. He discusses about the detection and control of fetal diseases also. How the disease can be removed by the herbal medicine. Then, bioethics issues like the Tusnesia colony. Now, it has become presented problems related with the euthanasia and cloning of the human beings. How we can take the ethical idea of the teachings of the Buddha and how we can adopt to for the removal of this Indonesia or the body. Then human rights, the human Buddha. Buddha also talks about the human rights. There are so many duties which have been given and there are some of the elements related with the human beings, human values, which have been prescribed in our body text also. Then sustainable ecology and environment. And we have already seen that how man is dependent on the nature and nature is dependent on environment. If there is no nature or environment, man cannot sustain also. So even the animals and the plants, they are also dependent on our human beings also. So both man and the human being animals, they are dependent on each other. So what are the suttas which are discussing about the sustaining ecology, that is the nation as well as the environment. We have to make this such of that. Now we can move towards the research. When a person is admitted for the PhD, he has to take at least seven stages for the completion of research. First of all, you have to identify such problems. We have already seen that there must be any problem for the research. For the research problems, you have to go through the literature also, the available in the field also, or related with the topic also. So, these research portions, until unless you do not go through the what the, the scholars have written on these problems and what are the solutions that have been given by those scholars, the new ideas won't come your in mind. The new research problems, until unless you do not go through the books, you cannot have it. So this is the whole making your research problems, you, there must be some aims and objectives of your research also. There must be an, a hypothesis of research also. And you can make a research plan also. That what will be the chapters of your thesis, how you have to make a research methodology, what the literature you are going to 
tech for your structure problems and then you have to collect the data from your library, from the manuscript, from the archives, from the monasteries. You have to analyze the, those research materials or data, then you have to interpret on the materials which are collected by you. You have to test the hypothesis if you have already given in hypothesis and then you have to make a research report also. So all these are taken together. Now how you can make a problem, how you can locate the problem related with the research. So this is, there are so many you can say theories and uh, contradictions related to with the problem of research. <coughs> By focusing on such phenomena, new opportunities can be explored, treat them as leverage points. Like there must be compressed crop also, but their establishments must continue. There must be perspective and a scale of your problem, like building different perspectives from different observation points helps. And then the re engineering of science, like considering this approach to a situation often provides new opportunities. So there are some of the scopes which are based upon your solutions also. So problem identification, how you can identify your the problem is the aspect the researcher worries about, thinks about, wants to find a solution for. The purpose is to solve the problem. The purpose which arises in your mind for the solution of your research problem, this is called as a hypothesis. So one example I have given that the increasing incidence of cancer of India, why there is a cases of increasing cancers in India. Second, how profusion of e-books and e-periodicals, what are the impacts of the scholarship, whether the e-journals or e-books are giving any impact in advancement of any knowledge. Then e-waste exposure is a big problem, how to manage it. Now, for the problem identification, there are drawing on the life experience, historical incidents, items in the news, eyewitnesses, local issues, country or region specific, cyber incidents. These are some of the locality through which the problem can come to your mind. There are so many incidents which are occurring in our daily life also. From those incidents you can make a research problem in your mind also. There are some historical incidents which are available in our text also. So you can make a research problem also. You go through the newspaper and you see there are so many news which are coming and when the problems are not understood, then you question it right in your mind also. There are some local issues also which make you responsible for being inquisitive. And there are some of the problems of the country also. There are some of the cases in the cyber library or some things and how it inspires others to think about it. How it can be initiated. So there are some of the identified problems. I outline the general context of the problem area. Highlight key theories, concepts and ideas directly in that problem area. A list of basic underlying assumptions and theory regarding the problem write down the identified important issues and focus on what is to be solved and resolved. 
you can uh, research it and initiate the problem with this. How idea can be developed? Why? As many times you go through the literature related to the topic, the ideas are coming in our mind. How we can
the whole loss is simply a gift from the bank. Then it is a special portion like what are the patterns of the one of the other thing. Is it constant? Some person, what element of the bank is needed? The second is it really directly related to the income? The separate sum from the reality. From that, we can formulate our research. 
the objectives can be framed and the objectives will be our chapters of our thesis and from that we can make literature review or we can observe or analyze, analyze the data which are collected from the libraries or archives of the monasteries and then hypothesis which has been already done for the problem solution these can be tested that whether it is validated or not based upon the research problem then you analyze the things you interpret them in your own, own language thus the conclusion can be done and then you can validate all these things so these are the links how you can select starting from your literature view till the completion of your thesis and from the research problem till your submission of your thesis there is a continuous literature review of your topic you have to collect literature related with your topic and these are some of the things which are related ontology, epistemology, methodology, methods and sources. So through the ontology which are uh, through which we are able to know that what is how to get to know. And through epistemology that through this what and how can we know about it. And through the methodology there are so many research methods. How can we go through about acquiring that knowledge? There is a empirical method, qualitative method, quantitative method, textual method through which we can acquire our knowledge. And through the methods, there must be precise procedure for collecting the materials and sources, canonical or non canonical, with the solutions, data we can collect. So these are some of the things related with the ontological classes, which are semi conceptual and possible, then ontological, depth, idealist and subtle. I am not going to discuss all these things. It will take some time. Epistemological classes, all they have been given that how knowledge is produced by use of human senses and experimental methods. Epistemological class, neo religion, constructivism, conventionalism. So, this is the status of knowledge. Through empiricism, we are getting the absolute, absolute knowledge. Through rationalization, we get the absolute knowledge. Through falsification, we get the tentative knowledge of anything. Through the new realism, we get tentative knowledge. Through construction, relative knowledge and conventionalism, there is a utility which is important. So these are some methods of the research. First is the quantitative research, which is mainly used for the anthropological or sociological research. So through this quantitative research, testing objective theories by examining the relationship among variables. This research is based upon the numbers. Numbers can be variables also. Measurement of variables are done using instruments and that produce number data. Numerical data are analyzed using aesthetical and analytical tools. Testing the theory detectively or generalizing and replicating the results in the outcome. Then qualitative research. It is mainly based upon the, our canonical and non-canonical literature. So through this qualitative research, we can explore and understand the many individuals or the group described. Data collected in participants setting. setting. Data analysis inductively builds from particulars to general themes. Making interpretations of the observed collected data. So these are some of the 
qualitative research where it is not variable, the numbers are not variable. So these are some of the things which are going to be discussed without the time. I have to find out them. So I am coming to the last stage that how this basics of all researches that how we have to start what will the aim of the aim, aims and the objectives of our research, how can we start and how can we end our cases. So this is the main chart through which we can make it clear to you, we can collect the data, we can analyze the data, we can design the new theories or new concepts and then we have to collect the things. So these are some of the checklists through which we can do that what the research problems which have been tested through the hypothesis, through the research methods or not. So this is the main. So this is the last which we are going to discuss that for being a smart researcher there must be some principles like a specific that we have to be very specific, articulate objectives, one quantifiable results, achievable results, relevant. It must be tidy that uh, it must be submitted within three or four years. It must be evaluated and it must be recorded also. So these are some of the research tips. So thank you very much. And if you have some of the problems related to the research and how the research are contemporary to our problems which a nation is facing related with the society, equality, liberty, fraternity, how the teachings of the Buddha can be undertaken for the research which are significant in the present time. We can discuss it and be very much glad if you put some of the questions that how we can take some of the things which are contemporary to our 